with such an excitement. And the, Pastor John asked me to open up briefly, keyword briefly. And the word in my spirit is expectation. And I fully believe tonight that our level of expectation will determine our experience tonight. That we could come in here, and this could be another Wednesday. This could be another church service, and we can go out the same way we came in. Or it could be that we come in here, posture our hearts to encounter the creator of the heavens and the earth. For a word to be imparted in season into our spirits that could change our lives. How many wants to do the latter tonight? How many wants to encounter God? So tonight, as we pray, let's just posture ourselves and get our minds right and our spirits settled to meet God tonight. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for the honor that we get to come before your throne. We lay aside every weight tonight, everything, every distraction, Lord. Holy Spirit, open our spiritual ears to hear what you are going to speak into our life tonight. We love you, Jesus. We say, have your way in this place. Move in power. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I forgot to play for Sam. <laughs> I just realized that. Today, the Lord... I was working on something for the youth. Sorry, I gotta use my verse. I was working on something for the youth, and I, I got out this old paper of scriptures that the Lord had given me um, uh, probably at least 10 years ago, maybe 12. And it was where he was, he was just, he kind of been speaking to me about really surrendering to him. And I remember being such a mess, and the Lord was kind of like, he used that scripture, 1 John 3, 6, that says, for those who are in him will not keep on sinning. And he was kind of making me draw some lines in the sand. And he said, I want you to get up every morning at this time, and I want you to seek my face. And he gave me a whole list of scriptures, and I put them on my mirror, and I'd pray those over my life. But they were every, every scripture. He gave me every scripture for every bondage, everything that I was so struggling with. And today I got that, that, that crumpled, old, worn-out list of scriptures today. And I realized how much the Lord had set me free from so many of those things. And I realized that He had rescued me. And that He keeps rescuing me. And this scripture, uh, Isaiah 43.1, says this. But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. And I want to encourage anybody here. If I, I was such a mess. And I was in church, growing up in church my whole life. But I needed Lord, the Lord to rescue me from myself. From all the stuff that I was. And I was a mess and I look at that today and realize you rescued me. You rescued me from anger and rage. He rescued me from depression. He rescued me. He rescued me from unforgiveness and bitterness. He rescued, broke those chains by his word. And tonight I just want to encourage you to keep chasing after him. And he will rescue you. He wants to rescue you. So stand up with me tonight. We don't have Jeremy or Damon. And I was like, and Tim Hines is here. Seriously? <laughs> but we're going to worship God anyways. Let's just raise our hands. Father God, we praise you for rescuing us. Lord, I pray today that if there's somebody here that feels like they're in the middle of their mess, Father God, I pray today you encourage their hearts and speak to them and say, I'm going to rescue you. Lord, you rescue us. And Father God, and sometimes it doesn't happen right then, but it just, you do it, Father God. So tonight we're going to keep chasing after you. We're going to keep following after you. We're going to keep saying, have your way in our lives. Our sole devotion, our only focus is to worship you, Lord. Have your way. We're going to surrender, keep surrendering, keep surrendering, Father God. Until we become what you want us to be, Father God, so that we look like you, Father God. 
All we ask is to be like you. So tonight, have your way. You are beautiful. And we thank you for your mercy and your love and your goodness that chases us all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen. Shame because of mercy. 
mercy. I'm all the I'm all the your grace and your mercy. Oh, Father God, just show us who you are. Our Abba, Father God. I 
heard this song I was trying really really hard to have a baby and it was taking way longer than I ever thought it would and that was such a helpless feeling for me because you're supposed to just be able to do that and I felt like God why am I not getting these things these other people are getting why why are you not giving me this and this song I stood on this song for years without babies and I just trusted that my God was going to give me the desires of my heart because I trusted him too and I would sing in my time of fear when I thought when I would let my mind go crazy thinking I'm never going to have them there's something wrong with me this is just not what I'm supposed to be able to do I would just have to say God I know your plan is better than mine and I made peace with that and I just knew that he was going to work it out. It was his time and it was not mine. And it took me, I mean, years I stood on this song and that promise. So sometimes it doesn't look like, yeah, I know you're going to work it out because I kind of see you working it out and I kind of think how you're going to work it out. Sometimes you have no idea. And sometimes it looks like it's not going to work out how you want it to and it's going to go a totally different way. But if you just trust him and you know that he wants everything good for you, and he has it and he's promised it he has promised good to you it doesn't always look like what we think but it's good because it's him let's sing that again my God is great my God is great and greatly to be praised come on lift your hands come on he holds the stars and he commands the way to my mind because I know that he's gonna work it out work it out all on time sing it one time my God is great my God is great yes, you are. and greatly to be praised he holds the stars and he commands the race I won't let fear creep into my mind
want you just to, just you and Jesus. I want you right now to shut everything out. And it's just you and your God. And you're going to sing these songs to Him. It's just you and Him. Shut everything else. And tell your God that you love Him and that He's holy. Holy are you, God. Holy.
Because you sing it. I want you to sing this last song. It says, My Soul Devotion. Come on, just sing this with all your heart. My soul devotion, come on, my only focus, come on, let your hands, to worship you, come on, my life surrender, my heart Father, we feel the weight of your glory tonight.
we thank you, Lord God, for your presence. Salvation happens because of your presence. The blind see because of your presence. The lame walk because of your presence. The dead are raised because of your presence. Hallelujah. We honor your presence tonight, Father. Oh, come on, church. He's waiting on us. He's waiting on us tonight. Everything within me is crying out. There's nothing impossible in this service tonight. Hallelujah. A miracle is not hard. Oh God, let our eyes see how easy this is, Lord. Let our hearts understand how tangible this is, Father. Hallelujah. I feel adjustments being made all over the building tonight. Glory to God Almighty. God, your presence eliminating the middleman so that all that's done in your presence brings honor and praise to you and to you alone. Oh, hallelujah. Nothing is impossible because we believe you. We believe you tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's all right to be free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And God is that Spirit. The sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. We're not using our liberty as an occasion of the flesh tonight. How many realize that? We're using our liberty as an occasion to take advantage of the fruit that's in the atmosphere tonight. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the miracles that have already happened in this place tonight. Lord, I thank you for the clearing of a throat. I, I want to call it throat cancer. In the name of Jesus, it's just been cursed by you and you alone. And and, and I feel it, it feel like it's just been departed. It's left this place. And Lord, I thank you for setting, Lord God, collarbones in place. And wherever the need is in our lives tonight, Lord God, the availability of a healing and a miracle is ready to transpire as we just yield to you and worship you. And thank you, God. Thank you. Lord, we thank you in advance. God, we thank you in advance. You love a thankful person. You'll take a thankful person way beyond healing, and you'll take a thankful person into the realm of wholeness. So in the name of Jesus, we be, we're, we're going to be grateful. We're not only going to be grateful for what you have done, but God, we're going to be grateful, Lord God, because we know you, and because we know you, we will rise up and do exploits. So we will be grateful for what you will do in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, the anointing's here. Let it destroy the yoke. Let it undo the burden. Let, let, let God leave his fingerprints on you tonight. Let God leave his fingerprints on you tonight. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. And the 24 elders fell before you, God, casting their crowns at your feet, crying, holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, and who is to come. Hallelujah. You're the same tonight. You're the same. You're the same to yesterday, today, and forever. You don't change. So we're not consumed. You're unchanging. So we are not consumed. Lord, we are thankful that we have the opportunity to walk in your light, to fellowship with you, to be cleansed. But Father God, to make sure that our lives are operating in the, in the dynamic of deliverance and dominion. We have authority in your name. Man, I'm telling you, I feel somebody's, somebody's lower neck getting adjusted all across the top of their shoulders. Your neck just getting adjusted. Whoever you are, you need to receive your miracle. Woo, here we go. Here we go. Oh, hallelujah. Just let it happen. You just got to let it happen. <laughs> you know, I was in a service on Sunday, and there are some people that are here tonight a couple of weeks back, it was I opened a prophetic conference in Seymour, and there was a lady in a wheelchair, and I was looking at her, and she's looking at me, and and I, and I know I said, "Ma'am," I said, "I know everything within you is crying out to me. Would you please pray for me?" But everything in me was crying out to her in Jesus' name. Stand up and walk. And I, I released that word to her. And Cece, what did she do? She got up and walked. We just got to let it happen. This last Sunday, a woman suffering underneath the paralysis of another stroke, just the Lord just took it right off of her. Took it, David took it right off of her. Phil, he's a miracle worker, isn't he? Amen. And the beauty, see, the beauty about being in his presence is not so much all that we get to enjoy by way of fruits, because healing is who he is, deliverance is who he is, miracles are who he is, salvation is who he is. But by being in his presence, we not only get to enjoy that yoke-destroying experience in manifestation, but then we get invited to a higher level of revelatory living. It's almost like our feet get taken out of the miry clay. We kind of get put on a different level, you know. When I'm, we, we, we get free and then we get on a different level, amen. And as we get on a different level, that's when we begin to live out our deliverance, live out our healing, live out our miracle, and then go on to greater things, amen. Hallelujah. You know, I tell you, Pastor, I just, I love this house. I love this house. Hallelujah. Would you mind if I moved here? <laughs> Amen. You know, uh, whew, thank you, Father God. Man, I'm telling you, it's just like hot oil all over me right now. Wow. We love you, Father. Now, granted, we are going to have to learn how to minister in this atmosphere. You know, Smith Wigglesworth invited people over to pray with him, and the power of God, the Shekinah of God would fill the room, and ministers were crawling for the door, and Smith learned how to sit in that atmosphere and, and minister from it. There are going to be times where we're not going to be able to stand because of the glory of the Lord. And then there are going to be times where there's going to need to be instruction 
from God's presence. How many realize that God is a God of balance? Amen. Now, we all like to hang from the chandelier. Y'all don't have, well, you got some fans, but we all like to jump on the furniture and make mascara run and, and all of that. But uh, sometimes we just need to let the surgical love of God. You know, I had the Lord tell me something the other day. He said, son, you're coming into a time where it's not always going to be about instruction. Sometimes it's going to be about the loving, healing power of my fruit. Amen. Sometimes we just need to let peace rule our heart and our mind. Sometimes we just need to let gentleness calm the waters. Amen. We just need the joy of the Lord. Let it be our strength. Let the love of God get shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. Amen. We're, we're, we're headed for a wonderful time, you guys. We really are. All right, would you tell your neighbor tonight, tell your neighbor the devil didn't have enough sense to keep you out of church tonight? Are the, young, are the young people staying tonight? Or they're, they're going? But before they go, I got one thing to say to you guys. Yee yee. <laughs> All right, y'all can, I guess, take off. Amen. Their kids are dismissed. Amen. Thank you, son. Thank you, Becky. Thank you, team. Praise the Lord. Everybody's trying to waterlog me around here. <laughs> I appreciate it, though. I've been to some churches where they, they didn't give you nothing. <laughs> I'm not on, I'm not on uh, any kind of a live stream, live feed tonight, am I? Thank you. Hey, Amen. There are just some things that I want to say. Oh, Hallelujah. You know, we live in an exciting time. We really do. We're in the last year of a decade. I've shared some things with you guys about all that. And I just want to let just, you know, I guess reiterate to you what a, a great time that we had during the prayer summit while we were here. And I pray that you enjoyed that. I pray that you were, um, you were launched in some degree by that. Um, I'm going to be sharing a sequel. I... I uh, preached the message, and um, I, I told everybody as I was preaching it that I had a sequel to it. I just I had too much on my plate. It was really kind of a, you know, a two-part feeding. So I'm very thankful for the opportunity to be able to be back with you. But uh, we got started out of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. How, how many brought your Bibles with you tonight? Um, I'm sure there's Wi-Fi in the building, so whatever, your, your Surface Pad, your iPad, your Surface Phone, your iPhone, your Android, whatever you have. I'm sure there's a Bible app on it in some, somewhere, somehow. But 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and our text was verse uh, 16. The Bible tells us this, therefore, everybody shout therefore. Anytime you see this, the word therefore in scripture, you need to find out what it's there for. All right? Therefore, we do not lose heart. Now, right there, we could just camp and preach, could we not? How many would love to be able to find a vein or find a lane that you could live life from where you never lose heart? Come on, somebody, don't look at me like you don't. I already feel like I'm starting to open a new gate tonight. Okay, I want to encourage you. There is a place in the spirits. There is a leading of the Holy Ghost. There is a revelatory path from the Word of God. God's Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. There is a place where I can live 24-7 where I never lose hearts. Come on, somebody. Now, I'm not saying that, that we are beyond or we are immune to to being distracted or being delayed or being discouraged. But I'm saying that there is a place where we can stay in an influence. 
This is, this is why we have available to us uh, Hebrews where, where we are exhorted in chapter 4 and verse 16, come boldly before the throne of grace that you might obtain mercy and find help in the time of need. There in the presence of the Lord, you never lose heart. I love what Mal said tonight. She didn't lose heart. She kept herself around the right influence. She kept herself around the right illumination. Are you listening? Okay. So the Bible says, therefore, we do not lose heart, even though the outward man is perishing. It does not matter what happens through the course of your natural body, through the course of life. I had the Lord ask me just the other day. He said, well, how many years do you want to live? Gave me the opportunity to set the timeline. And I said, God, I said, I'll take 92 years, but I want to make sure that I'm just as strong at 92 as I am at 58. Amen? Okay. Glory to God. And really, to be honest with you, I don't even really care, glory to God, you know, to get out of this rental suit and to be present with the Lord. I told Jody, I said, please tell the mortician to put a smile on my face. I want everybody that comes by that casket to look at me and go, what in the world is that dude smiling about? I want to witness until that lid goes down, man. I'm with him and you're still here. Amen. So the outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed on Sunday mornings. The inward man is only being renewed when Pastor John preaches. No, the inward man is being renewed day by day. You know what that means? It means that you've got to find out how that works. You, you, you got you to you come to a conclusion of saying, okay, how do, I, how do I implement this? How do I apply this? And it's a very simple process. You make sure that you give God solitary time. Love the way you're shouting. Thank you for one amen from the front row. Amen. You give God your best time, and I'll guarantee you he will make sure that you've got time for everything else. How many realize that God is a pretty good steward of time management? Amen. You make sure that you spend time with him. You meet with him. You let him influence your spirit. You see, your spirit, man, the part of you that knows eternity, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, that dynamic of you has no limitation attached to it. There is no defilement in it. It is pure koinonia. It is pure fellowship with the third party of the Trinity, God the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth, the paraclete, this one that's been sent from heaven to lead us and guide us into all truth while we're here on the face of the earth. That part of us can grow. It can, it can, it can be refreshed. It can be matured. It can be developed. Now listen to what I'm going to say. It has to be like this. You've got to have time with God and you have to be influenced by God and you have to be renewed by God and you have to be grown up in your spirit by God. I'm talking about growing in the mind of Christ, growing in the character of God, growing in the fruit of the Spirit, growing in the gifts of the Spirit, growing in the nature of God. You have to let that happen. Otherwise, you will not stand a chance. If you are not spiritually prepared on the inside, you will not stand a chance when spiritual opposition from the outside tries to come against your mind, your will, and your emotions, and your body, and your money, and your health, and your marriage, and your children, and in every aspect of life, it will come after you. It is a spiritual attack, and you've Please hear me tonight. The Holy Ghost will have greater influence on your spirit than a principality can on your soul. Okay? So we've, we've got to do something about this. Folks, there's some things going on that the church is just kind of calmly trying to navigate around and with and through. And, and I'm telling you, this is a time where we need to stand up and make our voice heard. Okay? So I want to just share some things with you tonight, if that would be okay. We need to pray. 
that our church services, and I will tell you, I wish that every church in America had church services like this. You know, I love being in a church service where you're betwixt between, what do you do? <laughs> and I was very proud of Pastor John tonight. I could feel him like a caged lion, man. <laughs> you know, and, and what I'm really learning to do is I'm learning to rest in his presence. And I'm learning to watch the people respond to his presence instead of always having to be choreographed. Come on, amen. Okay, we're, we're, we're learning how to start flowing and letting the Holy... I, the minute we start really capturing this, this approach is the minute that we're going to see some real unique things break out. Okay, so we need to, we need to pray that our church services... And, and hear what I'm going to say. Our fellowship with one another, our unified efforts in our community would stay in one accord. Okay? That we need, we need to pray that the demonic influence on men's carnal nature would, re, would be revealed by the efforts to produce disunity. This is what you've got to be paying attention to. Not folk that cause trouble, but for the reason why they cause trouble. This is what you got to pay paying attention to because demons feed on disunity. That's right. That's right. And can I tell you something? When the brethren are not operating in unity with God, they, demons do not have to respect our authority. And I want to encourage you. You see, you see demons will respect authority, but religious people won't. And I feel the Lord trying to close some doors tonight. Would that be all right? You know, close the doors on where the enemy's been successfully robbing us. Close the doors on where we've had a breakthrough only to lose it. Close some doors on, on, on really, you know, sustaining and growing and maturing and going on to greater exploits. Okay? Would that be all right? So you have to pay attention to these things. The lack of unity has many fruits. From recognizing where people are hung up because of a lack of present day clarity. How many realize that there's a lot of people that are afraid of revelation? They are afraid of change. Hello? You see, the church, the church should be, even in technology, the church should be on the cutting forefront. We have the Holy Ghost living in us. Why do, we have to, why do we have to let the world be all the, you know, the innovators and, and all the creative ones? Where are the, where are the spiritual ones that really know the whole? Amen. Come on. Where's Dwight L. Moody? Now, I'm not talking about end up thinking like you're Elijah, but I'm talking about the, you know, the one that God gave the creativity to to make the phonograph and, 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 and these other things. You and I are here in the earth. You know, I remember when I started talking about praise last year. Remember, Becky, and I started talking about praise, and everybody was just, you know, going crazy because nobody really understood the warfare of praise. And what I was really discouraged about is there were so many praise and worship leaders across the nation that were resisting yielding to the real warfare of how to set the tone and come before God, and they were missing the opportunity to actually pioneer the next great praise song that could sweep the nation and usher God's people into His presence. That's what I was discouraged about. I mean, every year that I come into and I'm catching glimpses of what God is wanting to say and what God is wanting to do, and many times, I, you know, you're looking at a guy just, you know, I, I, I just go through the door boldly. And I'm gladly misunderstood that Christ might be made known because somebody's got to echo something outside of the box. Prophets guide. Hello? There's nothing to govern if you don't have any guidance. So there's a lot of people that are afraid of, they're afraid of revelation when you shouldn't be afraid of revelation. You've got to understand something. The next learning curve that you come into it, where you feel intimidation, you've got to understand that that learning curve would have never come unless God knew that you had the potential to respond. Okay? 
You just got to recognize, hey, look, there could be some kind of fragmentation here. There could be some kind of stronghold here. There could be some kind of identity. Maybe somebody has, has brought an identity into my life that is keeping me from finding the strength to actually birth who I really am. I've let somebody else shape the way I think, shape the way I feel, shape the way I live. Words that are spoken, actions that are taken, abandonments, all kinds of things where the enemy has got fragmentations and disunity and demons are feeding and doing their best to keep people separated from God's best and his influence of his best. We okay with this? Hang in there, I'm about ready to clear my throat and get through this introduction. Okay, so this, a lack of unity has all kinds of fruits. And not only because of present day, a, a, a lack of present day uh, clarity, but also where people are afraid to grow in the nature and in the kingdom of God's nature, thinking that where they've always been is okay. The gray-haired people in church should be the wildest people in church. Even if you dye your hair and you know it's gray. You should be the wildest folk in church. Especially if you were raised in any kind of spirit-filled environment. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. I, I listen, I, I really think I really think that the older people should should be the ones that not sitting back but leading the way. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because here's the thing, young people need to be able to connect with the momentum of older people. And older people need to be able to connect with the creativity of younger people. See, Lane, you and I need to do a video together. Amen. Okay. And they work hand in hand. That, that, that way nobody's left out. Okay. So we, we don't need to be thinking that where we're at is okay. Here's, watch this. Listen to what I'm going to say. If life in any form can get you to react defensively. Should I give the altar call right now? Okay. If it can get you to react defensively out of insecurity, the enemy knows it has your focus on something that cannot be resolved. You understand? We've got to start changing our thinking. We've got to stop being so insecure, wrapped up in so many inferiorities, that every little negative thing that comes our way, you know, is a direct attack on our life. No, it just suggests that you're a card-carrying member of the human race. Right? There is no temptation that has befallen you that is, not, that is not already common to man. But with every temptation, God has provided an avenue of escape. Are you listening? What we need to do is we need to say, hey, look, okay, I'm a little defensive. I'm a little insecure. I, ha I have a little, you know, inferiority problem here. I'm not quite as dialed in. I'm not looking at myself the way God is looking at me. And I have a little bit of a spirit of judgment about me. Oh, come on, y'all. See, I told you, I told you that 2020 vision was trying to be given in 2019. Because if we don't start looking at things differently, we could let something reside in our life that keeps us from the next season, that keeps us from going through the next door, that keeps us from the next opportunity that keeps us from the next revelation. And then next thing you know, we're just plateauing and we're going through the motions. Well, you can fake it until you can't make it, I'll guarantee you. Okay? And I had the Lord say something to me just the other day, and it, it just totally changed my life. He said, I'm getting ready to show you things. I'm getting ready to help you see the way I see. Now, some of you are going, oh, oh, man. And I was doing that until he kept talking. And this is what he, went, what he went on to say to me, Tim. He said this. He said, and in the process of you seeing the way I see, what you're going to find out about yourself is you have a lifestyle that is standing in the way 
of being able to see like me. And I went, God, I said, okay. I mean, I've learned in over 39 years not to argue with the Lord. If he says something, you know, he probably knows what he's talking about. <laughs> I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, you know. I mean, <laughs> that's a good move, right? <laughs> Amen. Seasoned ministry. That's a good move, man. Good move. Okay. So I started you know, searching the Lord, inquiring of the Lord. And I'm going, what? What are you talking about? Because I live a clean life. I mean, as clean as I possibly can, you know, can. I mean, in the moment that I know, you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and the Lord said, son, he said, it has nothing to do with exterior temptation. It has everything to do with interior attitude of heart. Oh, you're going to like this tonight. Amen. And I've been going, oh, God, what are you talking about? And he said, son, he says, you've got to understand something. Adultery has tremendous impact in the moment, but it's not any different in my eyes than jealousy. Okay, you don't think that jealousy does not have long-term effects in people's lives? You don't, you don't think that outbursts of wrath don't have long-term effects in people's lives? Come on, are you hearing me? You know, you, you don't think that these, these, these so-called little sins that we never hear anybody preach about, you know, the envies and, 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 and all these things, you don't think that they don't have some long-term effects? I know a person that had a situation, still has a situation, and in, in I want to be trying to try be as vague as I can. That's the reason why I didn't want to be online, okay? Because these are realities. This is where people live. This is what people have got to be called out of. These are the secret things that nobody can see and nobody can hear until you're in the right circumstance. Okay. And this individual's got a problem. You see, she, she had her, her husband kind of, you know, was unfaithful. But this was years ago. They, 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 they navigated through it. They, 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 they got on the other side of it. But we're some 18, 19 years past this situation. And she still has this root in her. Now, here's the problem. The problem is, is let anybody that come, in, come into her life that, that is attractive, um, you know, whatever, and she instantly takes it as a threat that her husband is going to be seduced. And she ruins friendship after friendship after friendship after friendship. You don't think that jealousy can't have long-term devastating effects? Are you hearing me? I'm talking about the secret stuff. I'm talking about the attitude of heart. I'm talking about, God was simply saying, I'm talking about how you feel when people are talking about something that you don't really agree with, but you don't have the ability to see what they're talking about. Oh. Come on, this is honesty, y'all. Are you hearing me? And then we wonder why the church is not more productive. We wonder why our lives don't have more substance to them. We wonder why we don't have more authority. We wonder why we don't have greater breakthroughs. We wonder why we don't have greater opportunities. It's because we don't possess, let me retract that, you do possess the character, you just don't have the maturity of character to sustain you in the next season. Aren't you glad that you invited me tonight? Amen. So we've got to start paying attention to some things. Wouldn't you agree? Hello? Okay. Now, there are some wonderful passages of Scripture. Ephesians. Why don't, why don't, can we go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 3? I apologize to the sound people. Not giving you Scripture. But Ephesians chapter 3. And we're going to read, start reading in verse uh, 13. The Bible states it this way, therefore. Everybody, when you find in the scripture the word therefore, you need to find out what it's there for. Okay. Therefore, I ask that you do not lose heart. Hello? There's a vein. There's a lane, 
There's an influence. Amen. We go through things in life. Are you listening? If there's anybody that wrote the definition in the Webster's Dictionary of dysfunction, it's the Heinz home. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I mean, you know, when you when you're raised in a home where where you know you 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 were you you, you were brought up in alcoholism, and you know, I was, I was, my son and I were were changing out some locks the other day at the house, and I said, "Son, I said the only thing my dad taught me how to do was drink." Hello. Okay. I'm talking about, you know, when you're raised in that kind of environment, that kind of explosive environment, that kind of anger, that kind of fear. I'm talking about living in that kind of extreme poverty. I'm talking about when your dad is shot down in front of you at the age of 11, and then poverty really compounds. Okay? Listen, we all experience things in life. We're, nobody in this room is immune from being hurt by word or actions or failure or, or, or a thousand other things. What we have to be careful about is that we do not let that thing get a hook in us. Are you listening? We don't need, we got we to be careful because God is a God, according to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23, that will not only heal you, but his pursuit is to make you whole. He will present you to himself, whole, spirit, soul, and body. Amen. Okay, so we're going to pursue some things tonight, and I think that ultimately what we want to do is we want to arrive at Colossians chapter 2 in our, in our prayer time or in our fellowship or, or our influence of the Holy Spirit time to the degree that we understand that we are complete in him. Colossians 2 and 10. We're complete in him. The word complete means to be developed in perfection. So you know what that means? It means we might have to go through some recovery. It's called restoration. Amen. And to be recovered from the, from, from, from the effects of this world makes your gratitude to God just go through the roof. Somebody help me. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and watch this. You should never be ashamed of, of some of the laundry that you need to let God deal with. Some, some of the skeletons that are in the closet. You should never be ashamed of that. What you should do is you should say, God, it's okay. And it's time. And I feel that, 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 that everything's right for me to say, I can trust you here. And I, I got to let you take it. So that my cup can get filled up. Because I can't give what I don't have. Your deliverance tonight probably is a tool that God will use to deliver somebody maybe six months from now. All right, you know, I mean, I'm just, this is a daughter in the Lord. And I'm telling you that your time is now. Your green light is now. Okay? We, we can't undo or we can't go back and, 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 you know, uh, and, and, you know, make the past not happen. The past happened. Okay? Happened in all of our lives. But you don't have to stay a victim any longer is what I'm saying. Time for you to be a victorious daughter of the Lord. Okay, because the truth be known, that's the whole reason why I came after you. It's because I knew that I knew in my knower who you are. Okay, I mean, you could have been born in ruins. It's irrelevant. You could have been born underneath a bridge. The minute you got born again is the minute that life can't hold you. You just got to make a choice that life ain't going to hold me no longer. And the only thing that you need to be, oh, shatalahete. The only thing that you need to be hanging on to is the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, woo -hoo -hoo, have your way with me tonight, Jesus. Amen. I feel a little Aerosmith in my spirit. Walk this way. Amen. I just want to be headed in the right direction, right? Oh, come on. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. Watch this, y'all. Amen. 
Therefore, I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is for your glory. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with the might through his, through, with might through, through his spirit in the inner man. The inner man, the part of you that gets renewed, grows, gets refreshed, as in communion, quaint near with the Holy Ghost. Amen. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. How many realize that love can't fail? Amen. What you, need to make, what you need to do is you need to make a declaration tonight. Even though I might not fully understand the full outcome of my deliverance, I still feel the love of God trying to get a hold of something in my life, and I'm going to trust that God knows what he's doing. Amen. How many had the love of God touch? Well, that would be a stupid question. You wouldn't be here tonight unless you've had the love of God touch your life. Come on, wave at me. You know what it means to be loved where you didn't think that you deserved to be loved. You know what it means to be loved and when, you were, when you were hoping that there would be love for you. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about somebody that looks past your human limitation and sees the plan of God who he stays faithful to even when we abort because we're not thinking or feeling or looking like him. He stays faithful. whole reason why he don't quit the whole reason why he comes full circle. You can go, you can go ahead and, 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 and not answer the call of God on your life, but I will tell you that God will not quit because he knows what he created you for and he did not create you to be dominated by the God of this world. He did not create you to stay under poverty, stay under sickness, stay under any kind of mental confusion or oppressions or depressions or anything else. He didn't create you to do that. He created you to be born in a world that's cursed, but yes, after being born again, now all of a sudden you you are the only thing that's blessed in a cursed world. We just got to say, hey, you know what? I'm not going to let the devil play with me anymore. One thing, and here's the thing that keeps rising up in me. It's one thing for somebody to rebuke something in your life. It's another thing for you to go, I've had enough. And I rebuke it. Now all of a sudden what happens is you no longer have allowed somebody to cause you to pick up the offense that they hoped that you would be buried with. You got to be careful. People are crazy. I ain't lying. Church people are crazy. Especially the ones that don't know the Holy Ghost. They think they're doing good, but they're really carnal and religious and short-sighted. I mean, they crucified Christ. Do I need any more examples? <laughs> right? And, and you've got to be careful. And you can't. Listen, if you've got something alive in you that's bigger than the people that you're around, you can't let where people are at to pull you back. Pray for him. Pray for him. Look, I mean, I, listen, I, 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 oh, God, I got to be careful here. You know, it's just the way the office works. I mean, even Paul, Paul, in, in 2 Corinthians 13, he, he said, I want to boast, but it's foolish to boast. Right but I'm going to boast in the one that got caught up into the third heavens. Ooh, I, listen, I got a seasoned pastor here tonight, okay? I, 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 got, some, I got a hold of something, and I, I'm going to go ahead and give it a test drive tonight. Would that be all right? And you know what I think, he, you know what I think he's, he's saying? And I could be totally off, and I'm not going to preach it like it's doctrine, okay? What I think he's saying is he's not going to boast in his flesh. 
He's not going to boast in his education. He's not going to boast in, in his ancestral inheritance as being, you know, the tribe of Judah and so on and so forth. I think that he's boasting in where his spirit is in communion with God. It's just a thought. Is it, is it a good thought? Okay. Not a carnal thought, I'll tell you. <laughs> right? So, so I, I think that our spirit, man, and, and people, I, I, you know, I can't help it. It just happens. I live about a year out in front of folk, and I'm constantly going, hey, yo. You know, and people are going, eh. <laughs> it's the truth, man. So you got to come up with all kinds of creative ways to try and get it across to them and then make them feel, you know, make them feel like it was their idea. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Well, anyways, it's a lot, it's like, it's like the world, the world calls it deja vu. I call it my body catching up with where my spirit travels. I call, I call it incisions in time where I have kairos moments with God. I'm sitting, at, I'm sitting at, a, at, a, at a dinette table this morning at a pastor's house who was out of town. I was just sh uh, staying at his home, and um, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I got a download. It took me two days to figure it out, and I can't talk about it right now. <laughs> oh, Jesus, help us all. Amen. So there are times where you're, you're, you're going to, you guess this is why you've got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and you have to be sensitive to the leading of the Spirit and to recognize that maybe what you dreamt is not a coincidental thing. It's just time for something. Amen? Or somebody spoke a word and all of a sudden something went off in you and going, whoa, wait a minute, I heard that before. I've been in this moment before. Are, are, you, are you hearing me? Okay, this is what we need to boast in. And this is what the enemy will do his very best to keep you dull to. He'll try and keep you so focused on bickering with your wife, fighting with your children, struggling financially, whatever it might be, internal stuff. You know, just, you know, wounded and angry and bitter and oh, oh, just cluttered. And, and, and he'll try and keep you, he'll try and keep your sword dull with stuff. Well, what we need to do is say, you know what? It's time for the gnats and the ointment to go. It's time for the small foxes that have been spoiling the vine. It's time for them to go. It's time. Listen, I'm not going to stay this way any longer. I'm not going to watch everybody around me get blessed and know that God does want to bless me but can't bless me until I open my heart to let him bless me. Amen. Feel it slipping. I'm working and you're getting tired. So I'm going to try and speed this up a little bit. Ephesians, we can go ahead and continue to read this, but it talks about the length and the height and the width and, and the depth of God's love and to know the love of Christ which surpasseth all knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God and now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that works in us. I can't talk any faster than that. Do you, do you, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations. Everybody shout all generations. Forever and ever and amen. If you don't think that your decisions don't affect the next generation, you're mistaken. How many realize that they are a product of who we are? I had a, the pastor I just preached for on Sunday. Um, you, you, you'll know him, sir. Um, pastor Mike down in Middleport. He booked me at the R&R &R last, this last year. You know why he booked me? Because he watched my son. He said, if I watch that man's son, I'll know exactly who he is. <laughs> and I was, I was thanking that my son was on, on his P's and Q's that day. So <laughs> guy, way to go, Nate! <laughs> Because <laughs> my son ain't perfect, okay, you know. But uh, but our children, Psalm. Listen, Psalms one hundred six, verses 
35 through 37. Who's, got, who's still got a Bible open? Pastor, would you look up Isaiah 24, verses 4 through 6? Hold me, please. But Psalms 106, verses 35 through 37 says this. And everybody, everybody thinks that, you know, God's structure is, is just, you know, so difficult to follow. It's not. You just got to surrender to it. It, the reason people feel that it's so hard to follow is because it's so contrary to the nature of the flesh. But Psalms 105 or 106 verses 35 through 37 says this, I'm taking you into a land that is full of idols. And the reason, Isaiah 24 verses 4 through 6, I heard you. Okay, I'm taking you into a land that's full of idols. And if you do not keep my ordinances, if you don't keep my structure, you'll give your children to demons. Hello? Don't you think that it's time to start producing strong generations? Are we going to make mistakes as parents? Sure we are. How many realize that a manual... You know, raising kids, nobody wrote the, the full manual on that. Anybody ever got to the age of trying to parent young adults? Nobody wrote the manual on that. And how many realize that good kids don't fall out of heaven? They got to be trained. They got to be raised. They, they, they got to see the, the example, okay? Last time I was here, I was talking about how one of the reasons why they were, they, were, they were told to take 12 stones out of the middle of the Jordan is because those stones were polished and smoothed, and, and they were in the current, and they were all in, and they were under the flow. But they were to be memorial stones, not only to the generation that saw the miracle, but the generations that would be asking questions. Why are you carrying around them pile of rocks? Everywhere we camp, there's a pile of rocks. It's because we're supposed to teach young generations the lifestyle all in. Under the flow, stay in the current. Let the rub be the rub so that you don't abort your mission, so that you start flying straight and bring down giants. We're supposed to testify. That means that we pay attention to detail. Our decisions affect everybody around us. They just don't affect ourselves. And I will tell you that if you let God adjust your heart, at any point in life, it begins a trickle-down effect. The grace of God will get you kids, and they won't even know it. And the grace of God will get you grandkids, and they won't even know it. All because you stayed open before God and said, you know what? This has been in our family too long. It's been an ancestral curse. It's been a familiar spirit. It's produced one too many behaviors that did not end up in a good situation. And now it's time for me to repent and say, God... Deliver me from this situation. Amen. Come on, if you go clap, you need to clap. You want to shout, you can go ahead and shout if you want. Now, would you read Isaiah 24 for me, please? Yes, sir. The earth's mourn and dry up, and the land wastes away weathers. Even the greatest people on the earth waste away. The earth suffers the sins of people. For they twisted God's instructions, violated his law, and broken his everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse consumes the earth. Its people must pay the price for their sins. They must be destroyed by fire, and only a few are left alive. So the reason the earth is under a curse is because man broke God's ordinances. And the reason God's people still suffer today it's because they will not keep his commandments. Amen. You're here tonight. You can honestly say, man, God's been in on that high-level board meeting that I got going on in my mind. <laughs> He's been, he been listening to my thoughts and my feelings. Okay? I'm talking about tonight more than just unforgiveness. I'm talking about some little stuff that's been clouding your judgment and keeping your vision.
from being what it's really called to be. We're headed for a time, I'm telling you, Becky, when we hit 2020, God's given me a word. He entitled it, Premium View is going to come with a premium price. And I'm telling you, my eyes just have gone. And I'm seeing stuff. And I'm seeing what we need to see to implement in our lives the ability not only to be free, but to be bigger thinkers and more compassionate and more developed and more like Christ. How many realize that that's what the world needs to see? Because can I be honest with you? The world has got some words that they don't, they've got words for the church that they don't have for Jesus. You know what the world says about the church? They're greedy. Hello? They bicker. Hello? They got some words that they don't have towards Jesus. You know what they say when they say Jesus or think about Jesus, even though they don't know Jesus? Compassion understanding, unconditional love. What I'm saying is, here we are saying we're Christians, and that means to be Christ-like, but yet the world has verbiage about us. They don't, then, then, uh, what, then what they don't have about the one we serve. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. The Lord's trying to sweep in the corners. Hear me tonight. I'm going to close with this. I got one closing. That's a real brief closing. You know, most of the time when a preacher says they got these, I'm getting ready to close, that don't mean nothing. You know what I mean? But I close with this. Luke 15. A lamp is trimmed when wealth in the house is missing. And you have to trim the lamp so that you can start sweeping for what's there. Lamps are symbolic to prophets. When wealth is in the house, it's already here. It's just missing. You got to bring in the right illumination so that you can help people find it. I hope that I've helped you find something tonight. And I hope that you are willing to put it all on the line tonight. And say, you know what? I'm going to say goodbye to this stuff. I'm going to let the Holy Ghost take out the trash tonight. Amen? You know what I'm talking about. You know what the Spirit of God has put His finger on in your heart and life tonight. And if that is you, I want you to stand. I want change. I want change. I want change. I'm living the sermon. I'm living the sermon. Glory to God. I'm talking about how I feel when I get cut off in, 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 in traffic. Amen. You might not have that problem. You probably only feel that way when you're trying to cross this boulevard trying to leave church. <laughs> yeah, right there, right there. Repent. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You're on your feet tonight. Look at you. One thing I love about this church is you guys are not afraid to be honest. How many realize that God can work with people like that? You're on your feet tonight. Would you, would you just